Here's to what is hopefully a very successful talk show for resellers. <laughs> this is our first ever reseller recap talk show. Uh, you guys let us know in the comments that our reseller recaps are basically talk shows. So I felt like the only thing we were missing was guests. So we will hopefully every episode have a guest for you guys where they will have some kind of expertise or something cool to talk yeah. about in the reselling and, community that we then, don't really do. And then it's also going to have some wild hijinks, hopefully, maybe. <laughs> yeah, possibly. whatever you would see in a talk show. So if you have things you want to see in a talk show for our resellers, please leave that in the comments below. That'll help us out and bear with us with this new format. So let's get right into fashion trends because I think this is going to be fun because you don't like any fashion trends. So yeah. The first one that is really picking up steam right now is Coastal Cowgirl. So That's not a thing. It, it is a thing and... <laughs> there are no cowgirls. Let, let me be clear. There are no cowgirls east of the Mississippi. That is not a thing. That will never be a thing. And we need to stop pretending. So last year we had Coastal Grandma. So Coastal Grandma was the linens and kind of like Emily Gilmore on Mother's Vineyard, right? right? That's kind of how I felt. Coastal Cowgirl seems to be similar, but with the main exception being cowboy boots. So it's kind of like airy, flowy, like vibes, but it is cowboy boots. So I'm going to read to you specifically what they say is Coastal Cowgirl. And let's see how you feel about it. Uh, in style says overall the coastal cowgirl trend is both rugged and relaxed it combines the easy breezy coastal feel that comes from knits and oversized button downs with classic cowgirl essentials like western hats and big buckles and cowgirl boots they say that you can get away with using denim cutoffs a cowboy hat and maybe a leather jacket if it's cold outside to really get the coastal cowgirl look so i mean i think it could be a cute look and Cowboy boots are now trending because of this whole phenomenon. Hopefully we can get on the screen just how much cowgirl boots, cowboy boots, I don't know if there's really a difference, but it needs to be a gendered term, but either way, just they are trending. They're going West, crazy. Western boots. Yeah, so if you aren't sourcing cowboy boots, cowgirl boots, Western boots, whatever you want to call them, do that. They are going insane. They're going off the charts. So make sure that you're sourcing that. Now, in the research of this, no. I, I did a thing. I, you know, when you say that, things go badly fast. So I don't know that I want to hear this. So. Are you going to tell me something about some TV show that has some weird, like, take on it, like, floral cowgirl? No. I okay. may have found something from your past. What? What did there you find? Is, there is a photograph of my lovely wife wearing cowboy boots okay so what's this photo exactly i honestly don't know the story of this photo i just found it uh, in so you, one of you the went albums. through my facebook yep. got it got it so the only photo i can think of and i'm sure you're going to be putting this on the screen because you hate me yeah. and we will put a disclaimer at the bottom if i am incorrect about this photo but the only one i can think of that exists on any platform he could locate would be when i went to a wedding in texas and they told me that it was casual but western so you know i just you had to buy cowboy boots i owned cowboy boots already uh, yes um if we, if if i can be my honest, apologies because that's a normal thing to own i like country music so it was like you know regardless i killed it i killed it so i uh was coastal cowgirl before it was a thing right right is that what you're saying? Is that I what you're think, trying I to think, tell me? I think you do get credit You told for me that. I was yeah. shepherding it in before I, you were just giving me props. You def, you definitely were rocking that look. And that's, it's a special look. I'm glad I we don't start our first talk yeah. show like this. Lovely. Well, there is one more fashion trend that I wanted to bring to your attention. Now, this one actually started in 2019 at the Met Gala, but for some reason, Google Trends has it popping off the charts again, and I don't really know what the resurgence is. So if you guys know and you know why this has popped up again, I know Met Gala just happened, but that wasn't the theme this year, so I don't know. But it is camp fashion. So camp fashion... Camp fashion as in Patagonia, camp fashion as in like smart No, that would be Gorpcore. We've already gone over that. Oh, Keep my, up my apologies. Yeah, uh, what, what, what was I thinking? <laughs> no, this one would be... Just think kitschy, over the top, like uh, clown core, but a little bit just more. Just bad taste core, <laughs> like just just gaudy for the sake of God. Okay. No. Now it does say it's, that it's. It's like a campy bad movie <laughs> in fashion. 
Yes, yes, basically. It's so it's it's that, it's that's, meant to be ironically that's... bad. That might just be worse than than Coastal Cowgirl, well, actually. So I have found that in 2023, a spring fashion trend for men is supposed to be camp t or camp shirts. And this made me think of over the top Tommy Bahama because it says lightweight, flowy, but over the top camp. So think Tommy Bahama, but crazy. Gotcha. Would you wear it? I would like to know. Am I being paid? To <laughs> The, otherwise, no. I'm not going to wear it unless I'm being paid. So, I'm not going to intentionally look like an idiot for the sake of looking like an idiot. So basically what I've heard is if any camp fashion shirt brands would like to sponsor this talk show, <laughs> no. he will be show up in a talk show with camp shirts. Otherwise, hard pass. Yeah? Yeah. Speaking of all these fashion trends and aesthetics, we have a guest for you that not only is really great at finding all of these fashion trends and aesthetics, but also applying them to vintage fashion. So let me welcome Galaxy Vines. So welcome. Uh, could you tell us your name and how long have you been reselling and whether or not you're full or part time? We'll go with that. Hi, I'm Crystal. My store is Galaxy Finds and I'm going for uh, like over five years now, mm. I think. I don't even remember. Uh, <laughs> I'm mostly on Poshmark. I'm on Depop and recently eBay. It's been, you know. It's been eBay. Yeah, what was that? <laughs> the rest of that. Are you full time or part of um, I... what platforms? Oh, yeah. I am technically full time, but like three quarters time, I feel like, because like I have a part time job, but I feel like I don't put like 40 hours a week into reselling, but like close. So, like, yes, I'm full time. So, so I know you like vintage. You also like researching keywords for vintage. I know you mentioned boho and other things like that. And we've had yeah. some controversy on our channel recently. Yeah, about this. there's there's been a there's been two consensus, vastly different opinions. There are, there are people that have used some of the keywords that we've mentioned. Uh, Barbie core comes to mind. <laughs> One of our subscribers. Yes, you are responsible for that. I literally am wearing Barbie on my shirt. <laughs> Uh, he, uh, one of our channel members, uh, said that I used Barbie Corn. I sold something, and I now hate you. For <laughs> I making, feel dirty. I feel said. I feel dirty for making that sale. So you have that on the. It one worked. It, it did if, exactly. If if it's stupid, but it works, it's not stupid because it works. So and then the flip side of it is we've had several comments that are not really all that polite, saying I feel this is made up. I feel like this is just resellers trying to to sell more items, and and no one actually has that as a style. Yeah, so I'm curious what your insight is on that because I know you're much more into the keyword searching than I am. Okay, so with the core stuff, like, I think it's really fun. And if it helps sell an item, I'm gonna list it. Like, I'm gonna put it on there, whether it's silly or made up or whatever. I had, like, my favorite core, I think, would be, like, Goblin Core, which I know is, like, dirty cottage core and i tagged so many things with that and i remember after tagging a bunch of stuff like probably like 20 things somebody went through my closet and liked every single item that was tagged goblin core and i was like so somebody is searching that term so like it's not you know it's a wasted thing to put that in there you know so and like it's always changing and you know, cottage core isn't like at the top anymore, even though people still do search for it. it. People aren't doing the prairie thing as much anymore. It's gotten more into like bold colors, which is like the clown core and the Barbie core. Yeah, we're moving craziness. into maximalist fashion. But I feel like that, yes. And like, that was like kind of a post COVID thing. Like everybody went from like wearing their own butter to like going to festivals. So it was like, okay, so that like the fashion follows that. Now I know, I think it was you, on one of your stories recently, you showed that Target was actually showing one of these keycords. I wanna say it was Coastal Cowgirl, but I could be wrong, but I feel like it was yes. you, right? Target was talking about it. Mm -hmm. So it's, 
it's out yes there. the store all of the like regular retail stores are figuring out that this is a thing and like yeah target one of the biggest retailers like i get like notifications from the target app and all, all of a sudden the other day it said yeah coastal cowgirl and it you clicked on it and it was just pages of stuff that was like in the coastal cowgirl trend and i was like oh okay and then the other day it was hot topic that was clown core which i had shared with you and it was all like pastel clown core so and like i know dolls kill does that a lot they do all the cores they do all the trending stuff and it was somewhere else that did it too but like it's all the like trendier like some of the you know fast fashion does it and everything because that's kind of what they do but you know, they're selling it that way too. Question for you though, is how are you finding all of these cores? So I find them on Instagram and I've been looking on Depop and stuff, but I know you have better ways. So I'm you, curious. Let's what be honest. Strategy. You find them from her. Like, you, you, like literally, like, it is all her. <laughs> but what are your strategies for finding oh. these keywords? Right. Well, I, I wrote this down because there were a few. So there is actually an aesthetics wiki. And so it's literally like a Wikipedia of all the aesthetics, like any aesthetic you could find and like um i will give link but it's like aesthetics.com slash wiki or something like and it's like every everything you could possibly dream of as an aesthetic and it like and then you click on it and you go in and then it tells you other aesthetics that are similar to it so that's helpful um but to find out like what's actually trending like instagram i use pinterest a lot um go through people make like these mood boards with all different aesthetics then do just a blog post with a bunch of aesthetics um i don't know if you've seen that but it was very recently and they have a, a list on their site and um yeah like the depop newsletter they also will tell you what's trending poshmark poshmark does daily things which are sometimes crazy but like sometimes on point so they did Coastal Cowgirl the other day. Oh, did they? Um, I'm surprised yeah, so they were not. on top of it. <laughs> I know. I feel like they, they watch in Target. Like <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Now, for, for Vintage, and you can correct me if I'm wrong because I'm terrible at it, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a vastly different and harder skill set to learn, I feel, than traditional reselling because traditional reselling for me is all about the brand and you can kind of get a few bullet points on style but the brand is the brand is the key whereas vintage it's all about the style it's all about the era the aesthetic it's all of that which is a harder thing to figure out because it's more subjective and it's you have to have the eye for it and do you feel that's do you feel that's true do you feel that vintage yeah. is a little bit of yeah, like practice I mean, it's, it's definitely like, I've gotten better at it over the years for sure. But like, yeah, brand really doesn't matter unless it's like designer or it's like some vintage brand that's like trending or something. Like I know all that jazz for some reason is trending right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know why, but people are looking for that vintage brand and like, but I find like vintage Walmart and like, it's literally anything. Like if, as long as it's trendy and people want it nobody cares what brand it is yeah so i guess in the same line of you do you, what do you suggest for people that are just trying to break into vintage and don't know where to start where where would you suggest that they start i would say like if you have a bins near you like go to the bins and buy vintage like spend a ton of money on it at first if you don't know anything about it and like just kind of start researching and like if you see a tag and it looks vintage and you want to take a risk on it for less than a dollar like you know it is what it is like that that's probably the best way to do it i wouldn't go to like you know uh, a vintage store and like pay up for something if you didn't know if it was going to sell like i've i've gone to sales now and i've paid up to like 25 30 dollars for an item if i knew it was going to sell for a lot but I wouldn't have done that at the beginning. Yeah. Never. But like <laughs> I think we actually talked about that recently on the podcast we're not mentioning. Uh it was make a two, three dollar mistake. Don't make a, a twenty dollar mistake. Make a, a dollar mistake. That's that's how you learn. And yeah. It just gives you way more flexibility there to 
to try something out. I think we get oftentimes a little bit paralyzed by the, I don't want to make a mistake and, and that prevents you from learning and, and growing in a category. Yeah, that's fair. Mm-hmm. I think the last thing on vintage I just want to mention is one of our commenters wants to know, and you're the best person to ask, is vintage Sears a good thing to purchase? Or is is that just something that has gotten popular because of promoted listings now? <laughs> um, I mean, Sears did have a lot of great stuff back in like the 70s era. Like they had, you know, they made a lot of like polyester dresses that were like bright and colorful and had great patterns and stuff. So I guess like if that's the kind of stuff people are looking for, then yes, vintage is good. I've picked up some vintage Sears like lingerie stuff, like nightgowns and like slip dresses and stuff. And those sold okay. Um, I also have a pair of like vintage Sears jeans, like like high-waisted, like bell-bottom jeans that I picked up. like. Mm. Stuff like that. I mean, Sears had it all, though. So I guess, like, they have men's, women's, kids, and they've been around forever. So I guess vintage Sears, I'd look for it. We want to end everything on a positive note always. So I just wanted to ask, what is one tip or a piece of advice you'd give to a reseller that's struggling with sales or just struggling in general to kind of get them back on the right track? Well, considering that, you know, I struggle a lot something. <laughs> Yeah, like that's, basically that's just hard. like make sure reaching out to the other, the reseller community too, like to make friends and to talk to your friends when you're having a bad day. And, you know, I would say just, just keep going. Like, don't just give up if you're having like a hard time, like you can definitely take a break or like, you know, slow down a little bit. Don't, don't give up. I, 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 I don't know. Building a community, yeah. having <laughs> friends that you can, use as a support system is a is a wonderful tip and yeah. no one wants to go through any experience by themselves it just makes everything worse for this part of our show people have been asking us to do basically what i do on instagram where we ask crowdsource information for listings and some people have sent us some in and i shared one with you and i'm hoping you can help us get this listing sold for this person sell that, that listing, listing. So I want to start with you on title and price, since that's your, your forte. (laughs) Title and price, that's, that's all I can do really. (laughs) So this was the All Saints Milson Tropics shirt. And well, the first thing I noticed is that it is new with pegs, although it does seem a little bit high compared to the, the solds that I could find. Mm -hmm. So I would probably drop it to 60, $65 and hope to get around 50 after sending out a few offers. Mm -hmm because that seems to be where the floral All Saints shirts and blouses are landing fairly consistently. Some of them even lower, unfortunately, but $50 is right around the the high-end target. And your handwriting is atrocious. I know. It's so bad. So the title, I change all my website titles. I would go with All Saints Milson Tropics shirt because that's what's on the, the label from the store. And then size medium floral silk blouse to pack out the rest of it and have the title include the size. Okay. And then that's, that's all I got. That's that's everything. <laughs> that's that's my contribution to this entire pro- process. <laughs> and then hopefully maybe she has more contributions than that. <laughs> okay. Well, another thing about the title is I noticed that All Saints was was it supposed to be one word? Is it is it so, two words? Uh, truthfully, and maybe our commenters can answer that. All Saints is one word on their website, but on Poshmark, it is two Okay. Words. So. Yes. I right. Think, yeah, when I typed it into Poshmark, it was two words. So uh, maybe we can have people comment how they normally search for it, but having it both ways probably doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, that was my first thought. And then like, obviously longer title, which you had said and adding the size to it. I noticed like the button down shirt, cause it's a button down shirt. Let's see. I said tunic, tunic, cause it's like a longer. That's oversized good. shirt that's a pastel Ooh, pastel's like a good one. pastel uh like maybe either loose fit or relaxed even um and add like new or new with tags to the to the title because it said it was new with tags so um make the description a paragraph over a list we've talked about that before <laughs> but for like keywords i'd add pastel 
soft girl, perhaps. Hmm. Business casual, uh, brunch, botanical. Cute. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's what I got. <laughs> All right. And the only things I have here are I would I would add a white background just because Specio prefers white backgrounds, and I would mm-hmm. add if the pockets are functional, I couldn't tell from the photos to add that there's the front pockets there. I can't tell either way. I did look at past solds to see what um, sold it for them. And they had vintage floral wallpaper as a keyword. They also had tie dye, which it's almost tie dye, but not quite tie dye. And then yeah, they, um, I thought maybe you could use words like vacation, travel, and spring, because those are things that you're going to probably mm. wear for those occasions. But that's all I've got extra. But I think between yeah. all of this, this should help get this listing at least seen by new people. I, I think that, I think, well, assuming that you yeah, can hope so. get out of the awful search that is Poshmark <laughs> currently, because there's, there's no accounting for that. I, I looked at this item like five times and I got five different sets of results every time I looked for it. It was just <laughs> so inconsistent, yes. which is just yeah. a, a fact of life on Poshmark at the moment, yes. unfortunately. But hopefully that helps. So thank you so much for your help on that. So that was really fun. And I am super glad that we were able to have her. Make sure that you follow her on all channels. She is Galaxy Finds everywhere that you could find her. And definitely look at her YouTube channel because she is a wealth of knowledge. So let's move into eBay's grant program. So apparently eBay has had a grant program for a long time. I don't know how long it's been running, but they have an up and running program. This one is a 2023 one. It seems like it's been an ongoing thing for at least five, 10 years. It's been a long time. It, it has been. And so anybody can apply and basically they give you grants to help your small business do what it needs to do. Maybe you need money for inventory. Maybe you need money for I don't know, a camera or computer computer uh, or storage, some kind of big ticket expense that you're going to need for your business. They're just trying to help in a way that also benefits them because they get the tax right off for the donation. Really, (laughs) that's what it comes down to. I'm I'm a little bit cynical here and I'm going to say that eBay is only doing this for the good publicity and the fact that they get to write it off. I mean, that might be fair, but that does not stop me from wanting to get free money. So I am absolutely going to apply and I recommend that all of you do the same. We are going to put a link to this year's grant program in the description. There are different grant programs for different things. So make sure you read through them and find the one that is best for you. I definitely think it is worth it to have resources to better your small business in any way, shape, or form that you can. So don't not apply just because you think that eBay's using it for tax purposes. They probably no, are. take advantage of it. Absolutely yeah. take advantage of the fact that eBay is giving away money to make themselves look good. Yes, so go check out that link. I think it is a great thing. It is helping small businesses, and I'm really excited to see who of our channel members get it, if any. That would honestly be the height of our celebrity on the internet if one of our subscribers was lucky enough to win the ebay promotion for the the grant yeah so basically just apply for us just for that (laughs) reason do it for us don't do it for yourself (laughs) do it for us because that would be so much street cred for us (laughs) but really really do apply the link is in the description finally to wrap up our first first ever talk show is going to be a posh promoted update to go over some of the things that either we didn't cover fully or just new revelations about Posh promoted listings. Yeah, and mostly for me, there still isn't a lot of information out there, but you guys in the comments of our promoted listings video made a really big point. And I think there that's something so, we need to talk about. There was some seriously on, on top of it, people in the comments. Honestly, everyone in the comments was probably more up on top of things than <laughs> we were, and we posted a video. So I don't know what that says, but you guys had some really great insights. The first being that a lot of you are clicking on listings for comps, which I don't run comps, I don't do any of that. So I had completely glossed over that. But that is a very real concern if other resellers are clicking on your item and that is part of the fee pay per click, that is a very real concern. Yeah, I mean, and they also noted that there are people that might do it out of spite, that are people that might be upset that you didn't take their lowball offer. Maybe they're upset with you because something happened where there's a flaw on an item and they're coming back to retaliate, you know, all of that type of thing. I have a confession to make. I may be one of those spiteful, petty people, and I, I am working on it. 
Are you is, growing? Are you? I, I am trying. I'm well. I'm growing sideways these days, <laughs> but I I am working on it. But I am one of those people that I have been known to take things too far because I refuse to let something go. Well, hopefully your buyers aren't that way, but that is a really big concern and I don't know how Poshmark is going to address this. I have also been told that Poshmark is doing this because it helps them on Google. Now, I don't know how true that is. However, it does make sense that clicks to a web page does help a page rank better on Google, but I don't want them ranking better at the expense of me. That just doesn't. No, they should. They are cutting their budget to Google and making us foot the bill is what it seems that's, like. That's what it sounds like. Now, yeah, the, these are rumors. Like. We don't know. But um, the other thing that was in the comment section was that it looks like from people that are in the beta program, that is going to be 10 cents per click which adds up very quickly. You are you are already in the hole on a $25 item after 200 clicks. Yeah. So that is that is really really small number of people to click on your item before they purchase before you're just breaking even. Like you will So that's 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 when you start losing just no matter what you do. There's no profit to be made at all. It almost feels like that's penalizing having trendy items cuz you know you're going to get a lot of lookaloos when you have a trendy item and People are going to click and yeah, you're just going to That's going to be the problem with designer items, trendy items, anything that is very sought after because people are going to look at your listed item, even if it's not their size and to see if there are any others that are available. So they're just going to curiosity is going to, going to cost you money again. It's yeah. going to be, a, 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 it's going to be a debacle. Now again, we're still not in the beta program and we will let you know as soon as we are, because we do want to see how this goes. Um, we are going to do the beta program if we get accepted, but we can't say for sure that we're going to actually pay for promoted listings the way it stands right now. I would not pay for it this way. If they make some real changes to the program that I would consider. But as of right now, I'm only willing to do the beta. That is all I'm willing to say. That is everything we have so far regarding promoted listings. I know that more information is coming soon, but if you haven't heard everything we had to say about it and all of that insight that we gave you in the first video, make sure you click the link on the screen here to check that out.